This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of MaxList. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to get the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top resumes help more than 400,000 professionals land more interviews and get hired faster. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, you may be among the record number of people who have changed jobs. And before you made your switch, there may have been a period where you didn't work. Esther Leonard is here to discuss how to talk about your COVID-19 career gaps. She's a career coach and a talent recruitment professional. Esther also hosts Beyond Her Grind. It's a weekly podcast that gets into the root of what motivates women of color to want more in their careers. She joins us from Boston, Massachusetts. Well, let's get started, Esther. How common has it been during the pandemic for people to experience a break in employment? Oh, it's been very common. Um, This is a common question I get asked. And uh, people come in, clients, students, and they've either lost a job during the pandemic or they've taken time off to take care of a sick family member. Um, And it's quite common. In fact, employers know that it is common. So, so candidate seekers shouldn't worry that they're alone because almost everyone has had some form of gap. Well, let's talk about that gap and, and, Are employers concerned about this or because traditionally career gaps um, have been red flags for some hiring managers? Has that changed because of the COVID-19 pandemic, Esther? Yes, it's definitely changed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, More and more employers are, in in a sense, becoming more empathetic towards those gaps because we've went through a huge event in our lives and they've been impacted as well. So seeing a gap on the resume isn't surprising. Uh, you're right. Traditionally, employers saw that as a red flag, uh, but now there's it's a two year, two years during this pandemic. People have been laid off several months, and I think now it's it's shifted the culture into this understanding of people do take time for breaks, not only because of COVID nineteen, but because of other issues. So are you finding in your conversations with employers and candidates that it it doesn't make a difference to hiring managers if you left your job voluntarily uh, or uh, or or because of a shutdown? They they don't see a difference between the two sets of circumstances. Yeah, I think traditionally what people were worried about is if they were like fired for some type of something that they did on the job uh, versus being laid off. I think being laid off is definitely understandable, but now, and we're seeing this more and more. I've seen this in my practice. I've seen this uh, with alumni at BU as well, where people are taking career breaks. Uh, And I think the key thing, and I, we, we can definitely talk more about this is being open with some of that and being transparent to a certain degree of, of the reason. You don't have to go into so much detail, but sharing that with employers. But employers are seeing this. This is super common. And we, we are in this great resignation phase. And so, you know, employers are looking for people and they're seeing that people are, have taken some time off and, and, and the pandemic has, has allowed them to in some cases because of a layoff. So definitely I've seen it in my practice and I've also um, definitely seen a shift with employers' perspectives. Okay, well, let's talk about how to talk about these career breaks. And I know one of the uh, steps you recommend with your clients is to own what you did. Uh, What what do you mean by that, Esther? And, And why is it important? Yeah, I think what's super common is people are so worried about the career gap. And 
And mainly because what you've mentioned, traditionally, it's been looked at as a red flag on your resume, like something is wrong with the candidate because they missed a few months. And so this impacts the candidate's psyche, their their confidence, and and it can impact them in that job search process. So many times I tell people, you know, think about this gap. What did you do during this time? That's super important. And and one of the ways you can do that is really kind of start thinking about your accomplishments. And you can start off with accomplishments that you've had in your previous positions. Just, Just a reminder, just to boost yourself, boost your confidence, a reminder of all the awesome work you've done. But um, think about during this gap, did you take classes? Did you freelance? Did you do any form of consulting? Really think about what you did during that time. And um, and this excitement and pride will translate as you start applying for jobs and also as you start writing your resume as well, um, and and maybe even networking and and reaching out to employers. So really owning what you did is is super important, and that will shine through in your demeanor uh, and how you present yourself and in your application documents. I like your point about how reviewing your accomplishments can uh, boost your confidence. As you make those lists, Esther, what are some recommendations you make to your clients about how to apply that knowledge. You you touched on this, uh, I think, when looking at it, when updating your resume, but what are other steps listeners can take after they they put those lists together and to use that information uh, in their applications and interviews? Yeah, there's a few steps that they can take. So one is, of course, that resume piece, right? So, um, you can shift your resume from a chronological resume to a functional resume. So the chronological resume is basically, uh, a reverse chronological is basically showing the work that you've done from your most recent position to some of your older positions. Um, But a functional resume focuses on the functions, the skill sets that you have or, um, or some some of those transferable skills that you may be wanting to use in whatever jobs that you're applying for. So, for example, your resume after you have your name and maybe a summary, you can simply put, you know, if you're interested in recruitment, <laughs> you could put all your recruitment experience, and you don't necessarily have to put a um, do it by date. So that way, that can avoid any any gaps on your resume. Another thing that some people recommend on your resume is to put the dates uh, and not necessarily put the months. You know, sometimes if you have like short stints and you actually have a gap, um, that's an an option some people uh, do. And actually, you know, one of the things that I've seen as well is if if you've taken a class or if you volunteered during that time, right? Um, you can just put that on your resume, even if it's reverse chronological during you volunteered for six months or uh, a year and put that on your resume. So these are a few tweaks you can make to your resume to sort of, uh, you know, remove those gaps, gaps there. Um, so, yeah, I think those are some some key things that that could be helpful. And again, that's why it's so important for you to really think about your accomplishments, really self reflect on all this, the awesome work you've done, and um, that way you can write that down and translate that to your resume. You touched on this a moment ago, but I, I just want to explore this more. You said that employers more understanding uh, about gaps because of the COVID-19 pandemic. What's your best advice, Esther, about talking about the gaps? Uh, Is there a danger if you don't acknowledge uh, the gap or explain what you do that an employer might make up an explanation on their own? Yeah. So in, in some cases, if, you know, you can't, you, you can't avoid the gap. <laughs> I think it's important 
to share, depending on what stage of the interview you're you're at, I think it's important to share um, with your employer, whether this is via cover letter, via the interview process, if you make it to that stage. Or uh, in some cases, I was actually reading an article uh, about some employers are open to, you're saying that you you uh, took a year off. And if you feel comfortable sharing, you took a year off to take care of your family and run their family's business. So you, in some cases, that's something that if you feel comfortable doing it and you feel like you're working, applying to companies that are, are that have a culture that's open to that, then that's something that uh, you can do. But um, transparency is key. Uh, a while ago, there was a, a stat early on during the um, pandemic, which mentioned that uh, employers were uh, 60% more likely to look at your resume if you explained your gap. So, so that um, is, I think, shows that employers do appreciate, right, when you share a little bit about them. Now, again, you don't have, this is, sometimes these are very personal. Um, You don't have to share all that information if you don't want to. But if you can show some context, then that might be helpful. Well, terrific. Well, Esther, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Esther Leonard will continue to share her advice on how to talk about your COVID-19 career gaps. Stay with us. Do you keep putting off working on your resume? Here's an easy way to get started. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Top resume will review your resume for free. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. In just two business days, you'll get feedback you can use to make your resume better right away. Or you can hire top resume to do it for you. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the Max List studio. I'm talking with Esther Leonard. She's a career coach and a talent recruitment professional. Esther also hosts Beyond Her Grind. It's a weekly podcast that gets into the root of what motivates women of color to want more in their careers. She joins us from Boston, Massachusetts. Esther, before the break, we were talking about uh, talking to employers about COVID-19 career gaps. And you were uh, making some points about sharing information about what you were doing during the gaps. Do you have examples of, you know, how much you should say, or is it just simply enough to give a, a, a short explanation and then pivot onto another topic. What, what do you see work when candidates are, are explain, talking to employers about their COVID-19 career gaps? Yeah, great question. I think, again, it really depends on, on the format of it, right? In, in an interview, talking about your gap, you can really elaborate if you want and you feel comfortable with doing that. I think it depends on the the situation. I actually just met with a a client and they had mentioned something similar to this, right? They felt comfortable sharing because someone had shared with them. So if you feel comfortable sharing, go ahead and do that. Now on a resume, what you could do is, for example, maybe you you took some time during the gap to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> so you can write that on your resume. And I would focus on something like that. Focus on your transferable experience with on that resume or on the cover letter, right? Uh, what did you learn during this time? Are you applying for marketing roles and you have to learn how to market this YouTube channel? Even if you're volunteering, there's a lot of transferable experience. Even if you have children and you got more involved, you know, with with virtual events that were happening, talk about that and talk about that transferable experience in relation to whatever job that you're applying for. I think also in your cover letter, that's that's a a great uh, place where you can elaborate to a certain degree. But again, 
your resume, your cover letter, it, the purpose of it really isn't to explain your gaps. And I think people are stressed out about gaps so far when you really need to think about, can you do the job? The, the, the employer wants to know, can you do the job? And so the focus of your resume, the focus of your cover letter really needs to focus on that. And then a short explanation about that. So basic answer is depends on the con context, right, of the situation or, you know, don't dwell. I don't think it's necessarily to necessary for you to dwell too much because you need to dwell on your accomplishments, your skill sets, your strengths, what you can bring to the table. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I think sometimes applicants do dwell on those gaps. Why, in your experience, Esther, do you find talking about your accomplishments, your experiences, and your skills, instead of explaining, focusing on a gap, is more persuasive to an employer? Why does that, why does that make a difference with a hiring manager? Yeah, because as an employer, the employer simply wants to know, can you do the job? So I know sometimes the question comes up, oh, why is the gap? And and some of the reason I think for the worry about gaps is because I think candidates and, and traditionally employers are probably looking at gaps as, okay, are they are they going to stay at this role long term? You know, th that information. But really, an employer is looking at their job description, looking at the needs of their department and, and looking for someone who can fulfill those needs. And so an employer focusing on that makes sense, honestly. So you just need to focus on what can you bring to the table? Whatever happened throughout your gap, you can share. But also, instead of dwelling on the gap, you've had other experiences at other institutions, other companies, your volunteer, whatever it may be, that you can contribute to this new opportunity. And that's really what the employer cares about. And confidence, right? And talk more about confidence. You you touched on that in the first segment and the, the benefits of putting together a, uh, an accomplishment list and how that increases your confidence. It, it might seem like an obvious question, but why does increased confidence, particularly when you're coming through a period of employment gaps, help you as a candidate and, and make you more appealing to a, an employer? Yeah, confidence really helps you uh, convey a sense of ownership of what you've done, convey to an employer that you can do the work. Also, confidence can show resiliency, right? You've had this gap, you've done this during this time or, or this break or whatever it may be. It conveys that you know your worth, Right. And and that's super powerful in an employer's eyes. Right. Because that increases your chances of, of get making it to other steps in the interview process and or, you know, negotiating a higher salary. Right. So confidence is super important because lack of that, particularly as we're talking about COVID-19 gaps and that lack of confidence basically is the stress over, oh no, I have a few months or a year. And, and that translates into nervousness that can translate into uh, not really focusing on what you can contribute or just saying, talking about what you lack versus what you have. What other tips do you have for, for talking about uh, COVID-19 career gaps? We, we, uh, you mentioned putting together accomplishment lists, providing explanations to employers about the gaps, looking at a, uh, at a, uh, a, a functional resume. What are other suggestions that you have your clients consider? Yeah. Another thing I usually share or a piece of advice that I share is to network, particularly if there's this gap and you need to pivot into a new industry or repivot back into your old industry. So networking is super key. 80% of jobs come through networking. And so there's a power in that as you're starting to build relationships with prospective employers. And so some of those conversations about your gap can come up, right? 
in advance to you even applying for the role. So networking is super important. And you could do that, of course, online via LinkedIn or via via other uh, social media tools, or now as we're transitioning back in person, doing stuff uh, in person at networking events. So I think that's another thing that's that's super important and that people actually overlook the power of networking and, and sharing your story in that way in preparation to applying for roles. When you are networking with people during a job search and uh, how transparent should you be about your COVID-19 career gaps, the time you might've been out of work? Is that something that you only address if it comes up or should you uh, provide a brief explanation up front? Yeah, in the networking piece, you know, networking can be very informal. So I think really it's it's up to you. It's up. It's based on the situation. Feel free. I think networking is a great opportunity to to just share. Like, hey, I am ready to jump back in. I've had this gap, and during this gap, I've done X, Y, Z, and I'm ready to apply these these new skill sets along with the, all my other experience to this new position. I, I love to hear your advice. So the networking piece to me should, ha- even though people get nervous about networking, should actually be less nerve wracking because you're kind of in the driving seat, right? You're reaching out to people that you're interested in. You're reaching out, reaching out to companies, learning about the culture, learning to see if they're open to your types of backgrounds. So I think that, you know, sharing that up front, I think is a is a good, definitely a great strategy as you're networking. But again, it depends on the context. It depends on how the conversation is flowing. Um, in some cases, it they may just ask and, and you'll have to be ready to respond. Finally, Esther, in your work with your clients, are they surprised to learn that employers are more understanding about career gaps after uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, does, is that news to many of the applicants that you work with? Yeah, it's definitely, I think, I don't know if the word would be surprise, but I feel like relieved. And just, just a reminder that, first of all, typically what I, I tell clients is you're not alone, right? I, I, there are so many people in your situation and employers have hired them. And so just that reassurance that that there's a common humanity in that experience, I think, is is super helpful for for candidates um, in building their 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 hope and motivation um, for their next move. So, yeah, I would say they would feel they feel a little bit more relieved and then and we're able to move forward and, and sort of talk about some action steps that they can take uh, to address those gaps. Well, it's been a terrific conversation, Esther. Now, tell us, what's next for you? Yeah, so I started a new role at a startup. So I'm a sorcerer. I'm on the talent side, recruitment side, which is super exciting. So I am settling into that role. So that's mainly my focus. I am also still coaching, providing career coaching for women of color. And so I do take clients um, super excited about continuing that. So, and then I would say that I'm hoping I'm working on my Beyond Her Grind podcast. Cross fingers, I can have something out by by the summer. I, I'm just settling into this new role. Well, congratulations on your new role, and and uh, look forward to new episodes of your show. It's a terrific podcast. I hope listeners will check it out. I know uh, listeners can learn more about you by visiting your website, EstherTheCareerCoach.com, and that you also invite people to connect with you on LinkedIn. And if they do so, I hope they'll mention that they heard you on the show. Now, Esther, given all the great advice you've shared today, what's the one thing you want a listener to remember about how to talk about your COVID-19 career gaps? I think... The number one thing I would want a listener to know is that their experience, their skill sets are valid and they are enough for your next role. So those accomplishments, 
those key skills that they have, like those are really important and that they should dwell on that and not their gap. Make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash newsletters. Again, that's maxlist.org slash newsletters. Next week, our guest will be Brenda Abdilla. She's an executive and career coach. Brenda is also the author of Outsmarting Crazy Town a business novel about how derailed professionals can get back on track. You've sent in a job application, or even had an interview, and there's no response at all. Join us next Wednesday when Brenda Abdilla and I talk about why you're not hearing back from employers and what you can do about it. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job. This show is produced by Max List. Susan Thornton Hoff, schedules our guests, and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislinberry anderson manages our social media. Our sound engineer is Matt Fiorillo. Ryan Morrison at Popfly Productions edits the show. Dawn Moon creates our transcripts. And our music is by Freddie Trujillo. This is Mac Pritchard. See you next week. <laughs>